Hi everyone, this is Jim from the Pain PT here. Today we're going to talk about chronic pain in the brain and the science behind it, part two. We already went over some really good research in part one, linking the brain up with chronic pain and how it predicts and predisposes and continues chronic pain or continues acute pain that transitions into chronic pain. So there's more research out there. I want to show it to you. I want to expose it to people so they understand when we're talking about chronic pain, we're really talking more about the brain than we're talking about the local physical tissues in the body. Let's get to it. So this study done 2013 in the journal Brain um, looked at low back pain participants, both acute and chronic cases. And what they found was that um, when pain transitioned from acute to chronic, they found, that, again, like we saw before, that the strength of the connection between the medial prefrontal cortex and the nucleus accumbens was there. And it was determined at the time of entry into the study. So again, this is another uh, piece of evidence showing us that it's uh, pre-existing brain changes that predict the transition of pain from an acute pain to chronic pain. Um, they also found that the brain circuitry switches from purely nociception which is basically uh, that sensory aspect of pain when we just feel the sensation of pain and acute pain to emotional circuits and chronic pain. And we talked before about how chronic pain becomes more emotional in nature uh, in my one video on the difference between acute and chronic pain. So basically the authors state, and these are their direct quotes, that observations challenge long-standing theoretical concepts around the brain and pain. Uh, in 2017, there's a study here with over a thousand different participants with pelvic pain, fibromyalgia, and then some pain-free controls. And the authors quote here that when they put these people into the brain imaging scanner, we found that those who had widespread pain had increased gray matter and brain connectivity within sensory and motor cortical areas compared to the pain-free people. So again, they were seeing changes in the brains of people who had sort of fibromyalgic pain and chronic pelvic pain versus people who had zero pain. And so here's what they think. We think that this type of study will help treat these patients because if they have a central nerve biological component to their disorder, they're much more likely to benefit from targets that affect the central nervous system rather than from treatments that are aimed at the pelvic region. And this is what we're getting at. Uh, our treatment needs to be targeting the central nervous system, which is the brain and the nerves that run from it, rather than treating the local tissues, like in this case, the pelvic area. And this is why a lot of treatments for chronic pain are failing, because we're still treating chronic pain like it's the same thing as acute pain. Here's a small study but very interesting, came out in 2018 from some guys out of University of Michigan in collaboration with some researchers in Korea. And uh, they found that doing EEG readings of the brain that people with uh, fibromyalgia and chronic pain have a, a higher level of sensitivity. They're hypersensitive. And this is a common report we see with people in chronic pain is that they're very sensitive to things and that their symptoms are easily triggered. So the researchers state here, for the first time, uh, they're showing that hypersensitivity experienced by chronic pain patients may result from hypersensitive brain networks, as opposed to the normal process of gradually linking up different centers of the brain after a stimulus. Chronic pain patients have conditions that predispose them to linking up in an abrupt, explosive manner. And this can help explain how a real small stimulus or something that's really not threatening to our brain and nervous system can trigger a big time response like with chronic pain. It's cool to see we've got some evidence that's supporting this now. Uh, this is a, a good study done in 2017, European Journal of Pain. It's a review of all the literature, looked at over a thousand studies that have been done uh, looking at cognitive and emotional factors in chronic pain. And here's what they found. They basically found that maladaptive cognitive and emotional factors are associated with several brain regions involved in chronic pain. 
targeting these factors in these patients might normalize specific brain alterations. So they're suggesting that if we target these um, cognitive and emotional um, factors, that we might be able to change the brain and, in essence, change the pain. So the key finding of this review is that there's clear evidence of brain alterations, including gray matter volume, connectivity, resting state network, and other things, but that they were associated with self-reported pain catastrophizing. Uh, catastrophizing is basically negative thinking. When we're thinking completely negative and for the worst case scenario in relation to our pain, um, they found that it, you had a 47% increased risk of developing chronic pain when you catastrophize. And this is really interesting. This is something we talk a lot about and when we treat chronic pain with the patients I treat is that our thinking is everything. That's part of this brain. Our thoughts and beliefs are part of our brain network that's been shown to change in chronic pain. So we've got to move from catastrophizing, from negative thinking to positive thinking. So let's have a look here. Here's one last study we'll talk about today. This was, again, functional MRI studies done, chronic low back pain, 2018 study. Looked again at over 1,000 studies, pooling all the data together. And they say this, the study has systematically reviewed the literature demonstrating there are widespread structural and functional brain changes in individuals with chronic back pain. The brain changes in chronic low back pain groups were mainly observed in areas and networks important in emotion, and cognition rather than those typically associated with nociception. So this is really important. Again, different researchers saying the same thing that we're talking about the emotions and the thoughts. And it's these parts of the brain that are showing up in chronic back pain in this case rather than just the areas of the brain associated with nociception which is more like acute pain. And so the authors go on to say, this supports the understanding that emotional and cognitive processes may be the core contributor to the chronic low back pain experience. And so this is exactly what we're talking about and what we do here at the Pain PT when we're treating chronic pain. We're treating these emotional and cognitive processes that are related to these parts of the brain. <clears throat> so we can make changes uh, not only in the brain but then also in the body as a result of working on these areas. I hope this was enlightening to you and gave you some more information, some research to support the work we're doing here and support a new paradigm shift in how we're looking at and treating chronic pain. Thank you very much. If you want any more information, go to my website. You see listed here, or you can check me out an email. Take care.